Typically, Linux users tend to be the most anti-Apple people out there, and it's pretty easy to see why. Apple is the opposite of everything that Linux stands for. They lock down the software, make their hardware impossible to upgrade or repair, and they're generally anti-user freedoms. But even despite that, every so often Apple do make a truly incredible product, such as the M1 processor. For the first time, Apple have created a line of Macs that are genuinely very compelling and worth owning. You can really tell that they're something special when even Linux users such as myself and Linux for Everyone have gone out there and bought one. So in today's video, I want to tell you why exactly Linux users should care about M1 right now on the Linux Lounge. So indeed, today I'm going to be talking about why exactly Linux users should care about M1 Max. And the first reason, though it's stating the obvious a little bit, is that they're very soon going to be able to run Linux. Now, granted, the M1 port of Linux is still fairly early days, but considering the fact that we already have an M1 Mac Mini running the GNOME desktop environment on Linux natively, I think that it won't be too long until we can run Linux on all M1 devices with full hardware support. Considering how new Apple Silicon is, that is seriously impressive in my opinion. But you might ask, even if M1 Max can run Linux natively, why exactly should I care? Well, the main reason is that ARM devices are absolutely fantastic, and Apple's M1 Max are among the first ARM devices that are ready for use by power users. Raspberry Pis and everything that Pine64 puts out is great, but they're not necessarily capable of pro work. For instance, I definitely couldn't make my videos on them, but I can make my videos on an M1 Mac in full 4K, I must add. That's something that is seriously impressive for an ARM device. M1 devices also have the same advantages that other ARM devices have too. They generally outperform x86 devices at the same price range, and they also typically have better battery life and better thermal performance too. Who wouldn't want that on a Linux machine? Another thing that makes ARM so compelling is that it frees us from the monopoly of x86. In the past, if you've wanted a CPU, especially for pro work, your options have either been AMD or Intel. Now you also have the option of going with Apple Silicon, which is less than ideal, but it is still another option for the end user. Another reason why Linux users should probably care about M1 is that it's just really a fun thing to tinker with. Getting Linux to run on M1 is a seriously impressive achievement, and I can't wait to see what else the Linux community can do with these devices. I imagine that the possibilities are going to be absolutely endless. I think it's also probably worth pointing out that at some point in the future, M1 Max may also provide a good way to dual boot macOS and Linux, which is desirable to a lot of users myself included actually. Now, it's true that macOS is non-free software and frankly evil, but it is also Unix-like and is admittedly pretty comfy to use. So, for those rare few times I need to use non-free software, I would obviously much rather use macOS than Windows. Plus, as a creative professional, Final Cut Pro and the rest of Apple's creative suite is really, really useful, and to be honest, I haven't really found anything that bests it. It's also worth mentioning that wherever Apple goes, the rest of the market tends to follow. So I imagine that the M1 will probably lead to many other hardware vendors creating ARM machines to rival Apple. With any luck, those machines should be far more open and Linux friendly than Apple's M1. In fact, Linux may even grow its market share if these future ARM desktop PCs ship with Linux, which they probably will because Linux is by far the most ARM friendly operating system out there. So in conclusion, I think that the M1 Max will, in the future, provide a powerful, polished and premium piece of ARM hardware to run Linux on, the likes of which hasn't really been matched in the ARM computer space yet. And although these devices are flawed, for instance you can't upgrade or repair them and Linux support will probably be never quite as good as on non-Apple hardware, I do think that for the right Linux user, M1 will provide a great bit of kit, and I am certainly excited to be able to run Linux on my M1 iMac. But with that said, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think? Do you think that the M1 will provide some good hardware to run Linux on? Let me know in the comment section below. I thank you for watching today's video, and I will see you in the next one.